If you want to take a picture of the black hole in the heart of our galaxy, you need a network of radio dishes that forms a virtual telescope as large as the Earth. This network is called the Event Horizon Telescope. It captures some of the light that makes the long journey from just outside the black hole to the Earth. It uses this light to create an image. Light can be viewed as a wave. The type of light depends on the wavelength, the distance from one peak in a wave to the next. Longer waves include radio waves and microwaves. Shorter waves include X-rays and gamma rays. All the colors humans see make up only a tiny portion of the spectrum of light. Black holes are surrounded by a cloud of hot, magnetized gas called an accretion disk. Light waves of all wavelengths, radio waves, microwaves, visible light, and others, are born in this cloud. Some light gets sucked into the black hole. Other light waves have their paths bent by the black hole's gravity, but just manage to escape. These light waves carry the crucial information needed to make an image of the black hole. However, not all light survives the journey to Earth. Many of the wavelengths are lost. Long radio waves are scattered by the hot gas close to the black hole. The rest escape the cloud unimpeded and begin the long journey toward Earth. Along the way, the light waves must pass through the clouds of gas between the stars, called the interstellar medium. Dust in these clouds absorbs visible and some infrared light. However, no black hole image can be made from the surviving infrared light with current technology. Charged particles can cause medium-length radio waves to veer slightly from their path. A black hole image made from these radio waves would be blurry. Other wavelengths have no trouble passing right through. The light's journey continues closer and closer. After traveling thousands of light years across the galaxy, their last obstacle is only 10 miles from the telescope, Earth's atmosphere. Water vapor and other gases block and absorb shorter wavelengths, including some ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. By the time light reaches one of the many sites around the world that make up the Event Horizon Telescope, only a few wavelengths survive. But the longer the wavelength, the blurrier the picture. This leaves the one millimeter wavelength, the last remaining wavelength for imaging a black hole. The Event Horizon Telescope captures one millimeter light waves like this one. Because it's not too short and not too long, scientists at the Event Horizon Telescope call one millimeter the Goldilocks wavelength. It's the one region of the spectrum that carries all the information needed to create detailed images of a black hole.